Pick up from where we left off with our discussion of Iwala's Beast of No Nation. One of the things that we talked about at length was the nature of the text itself. I believe that it was, very, it was a very important discussion in that we wanted to understand how Iwala was able to convey trauma in his work. And I believe that there are very, uh, various factors that enabled us to uh, feel the trauma within the text. One of them is the fact that Ayawela used the first person point of view. The first person point of view generally has the ability of breaking the distance between the reader and the narrator. That, I think, was a very good uh, strategy to have the novel written in autobiographical form. Another point that was brought up was that this text was written in Pidgin English. I am uncertain that this text was necessarily written in Pidgin English as much as it was written in the narrative voice or the persona of a child who did not master the language sufficiently. However, the language itself is quite efficient for the simple reason that it is a stark language that is not embellished and which allow, allows us to get a visual picture of the confusion, the trauma that the child is experiencing. Now, as we read this text, our narrator never tells us what his feelings are about the killings or about the horror around him. We find out what the trauma consists of simply through his description of objects. Elaine Scarry in The Body in Pain tells us that it is almost impossible to convey the unspeakable. But he is able to convey the unspeakable by using objects rather than talking about the pain that he is experiencing. Thus, during his first experience of killing people, he does not say, and my heart throbbed, and I pushed my knife in. What we find out of the, all the pain and all the trauma is conveyed through the object, the machete, when he says, and the, uh, I held the machete and cut, cut, cut. So the trauma is objectified on the body. And this trauma is consistently all throughout the narrative dramatized on the body. Now, when he talks about his father's death, he doesn't talk about the horror of seeing his father dying. He conveys the, this uh, trauma through the physical action of his father. So the emphasis is on the bullet that has hit his father, who goes on dancing and dancing away, as he says, until he, is, uh, he looks like he's raising his hands to the sky in praise. This, I think, is why the book is so effective. The book also is a testimonial that is akin to the ones that we encounter in human rights narratives. And this is also an interesting point for us to uh, know for the simple reason that this is an account that our hero is not telling to the reader, but telling to a human rights worker, to, to a uh, human rights worker, perhaps an ONG uh, member, or perhaps a United Nations member. Normally, these testimonies are supposed to give the speaker agency. However, the fact that our author has used a title of a previous song written by a Nigerian who had been imprisoned of the same title, uh, it tends to indicate that the narrator, even though he is able to give his account of trauma, does not have agency because that book in itself criticizes these ONGs and specifically the United Nations for not being united for, and for being a disunited nation. I'm going to stop here and I hope we can pick up here next time in class. It is cold out there. Keep warm. Keep reading. And I am looking forward to reading you on Blackboard. Have a good day.